Yes, it took me five years to make this video. For the past five years, I've been thinking and dreaming about having a cinema camera. I even had the crazy thought of buying a red cinema camera. I researched it a lot and even tried to justify it financially. Then I started thinking like a grown-up. Is an expensive cinema camera a need for me? And what would be the return on investment be on my end? And because I wasn't satisfied with the answers, I thought putting it off for a while would make sense. Until this very camera. Sony FX30. Sony's entry cinema line camera. I figured this is the only cinema camera I need. After five years of thinking about a cinema camera, I finally have it. Today I'm getting ready for a road trip. I'm gonna be heading out to Montreal and with me I'll have my Sony FX30 as my main camera. I've been using the FX30 for the last one month. But to be fair, I only used it in a very controlled environment. Now let's put it through a real world test. I'm leaving Hamilton, Ontario at 5.30 a.m. I'll be in Montreal by 1 p.m. And honestly, best part of any road trip in Canada is the on routes. I just wish there was a more variety when it comes to restaurant options. The only thing that was open around 7 o'clock was Timmy's. It is what it is, I guess. Now, one of the biggest benefits of a cinema camera is that cinema cameras don't have recording limits. Some of these shots that you're seeing were actually recorded for a long time. Not longer than 30 minutes, which is the usual limit for mirrorless cameras. But generally, it's just nice to record stuff for a long time and grab what you need afterwards. If you're a videographer and, for example, shooting interviews, this is really beneficial. And something else that's very beneficial is a nice luggage set when you're on the go. This portion of the video is sponsored by Level 8. I want to give a shout out to my new travel buddy, the Gibraltar Aluminum Carry-On from Level 8. This luggage isn't just stylish, it's a Red Dot Design Award winner. But for this carry-on's case, design doesn't mean you have to give up on functionality. Made with aerospace-grade aluminum magnesium alloy, it's super durable and damn it looks good. We have features like TSI approved locks and really quiet 360 degree spinner wheels. We also get these removable dividers to keep yourself more organized. You can divide up your toiletries, your tech stuff, whatever you like. I don't know, I kind of feel like James Bond carrying around this aluminum carry-on. It looks really classy, super slick, and capacity-wise, it's all I need for these kind of trips. With the 36 liter capacity, it's the perfect size for all my tech gear and travel essentials. Plus, it's organized really well inside, so everything stays in place. Thank you, for sponsoring this portion of the video. We're so lucky to be in times where as cameras get smaller, we get better image quality. And that is actually the case with the Sony FX30. This camera may be the smallest cinema camera in the market today. The FX30 weighs about 646 grams. I personally have no problem carrying it for 5-6 hours in the city while still going to cafes or going to a restaurant to eat and just being a part of the society with a cinema camera. I also do like the build quality of the FX30. The main material used is magnesium alloy and I do like to put a cage on my cameras just to keep them protected. I know it makes the whole build really heavy but the extra weight is worth the protection in my opinion and I try to get the cheapest cage with the most mounts possible and with my FX30 I'm rocking a smaller cage. Now aside the looks what costs a lot with cinema cameras is the sensor quality. Now despite the FX30 being a crop sensor cinema camera we're working with the 26 megapixel BSI sensor. This is an oversampled 4k sensor. We're getting 4k 120 with a minor crop a 5-axis IBIS and a 10-bit 422 internal and the advertised dynamic range is 14 styles with the FX30 which I would totally agree with after shooting some really complicated shots. Great job there Sony and the FX30 comes with two base ISO settings one of them being ISO 800 and second one is ISO 2500 and specs wise that's all you need to pretty much know about a camera. This was a pretty sunny day which gives me the opportunity to really push the sensor to the limits. Now you probably heard a lot of camera people talk about Sony's menus. A lot of people say Sony's menus are complicated. Now I never really agreed with that. I just think there's no such thing as a bad menu system. There's a fact that you're just not used to it. So you just gotta get used to the menu system. And to be fair, I did find it challenging at first, but after a month, I'm pretty used to it now. The Sony FX30 brings the S-Log3 profile for those who are interested in taking their color grading to the next level. The S-Log3 is designed to capture a wide dynamic range. And I actually find it pretty easy to color grade on the S-Log3 myself. It may take a little bit of time for you to get used to, especially if you are coming from a different camera system. But honestly, it's very easy to learn. Of course, with pro-level cameras, we have to talk about lenses, as good lenses make a big difference. 
Well, luckily the Sony FX30 brings us the Sony E-mount system. Sony does have a variety of native lenses for you to choose from, and some of those give you power zoom options, which is awesome. I myself like to save a little bit of money when it comes to camera gear, and there's no particular reason for that. At this period of my life, I like to spend money on other stuff, but I do believe in the importance of using new gear as a method of self investment Sometimes it just sparks your will to create and film. So for now, the only lens that I have with the FX30 is the 16 mm Sigma 1.4 E-mount lens. Now I'd like to add a couple more lenses to my E-mount arsenal, but I'm transitioning out of a Fuji system, so it's gonna take a little bit. But my goal is to cover multiple focal lengths. My biggest reason for switching to a Sony camera system is the autofocus performance that Sony provides. This is the best autofocus system I've used on a camera. It literally works like a smartphone autofocus system. And I did use other camera systems before. And honestly, it's 2024 and most camera companies miss the focus when it comes to autofocus. A lot of the camera brands out there are not reliable when it comes to autofocus performance. I know they're trying to get all fancy with AI and stuff, it's just not reliable. And unfortunately, missed focuses, scene reshoots are the biggest energy drop for me on a shoot. I do film myself quite a bit, especially for YouTube, so therefore I need my autofocus to work reliably. And another good assistant when filming yourself is the tally lights that you're seeing on the screen right now. There are a few of these lights that go on when you're actually pressed the record button. So if you're filming yourself and not recording by chance, you'll know if you don't see the light flashing. I guess the FX30 makes it really hard to mess up. Some of my favorite things with the FX30 is the two card slots and the option to use both SD and CF Express cards. Other than that, I'm really enjoying the build quality and the fact that we have a full size HDMI. I really don't like the micro HDMI stuff. And as a content creator, I do really like the articulating screen. Thank you, Sony. The FX30 is a versatile and a powerful camera that brings a lot of high-end features into a compact form factor. Whether you're a content creator, filmmaker, or a tech enthusiast, this camera offers a great combination of performance and ease of use. Mind you, it is a cinema camera. It is honestly a solid choice for anyone who's looking up to step up their video production game. And for the past five years, I really have been thinking about getting a cinema camera. And as for now, I have no regrets in choosing Sony or the FX30. And in fact, with the way this is going, I really might leave Fuji completely and switch to a Sony camera for photography as well. This has been a very good cinema line upgrade with manageable file sizes, with a body that's compact and lightweight, and amazing autofocus perks. Thank you so much for watching my Sony FX30 video. I know I don't talk about cameras a whole lot, but I wanted to update you on what I'm filming with lately. As usual, I appreciate you being here and it has been a pleasure. And here's a sneak peek of what is coming next.